And that's why you're not really feeling torque from the seat of your hog. Any questions? When I rode the new Royal Enfield, I was flabbergasted to find a Pirelli Phantom Sports Comps. And that's like getting a Fabergé egg in your Kinder Surprise. It's a $250 tire on the aftermarket. OEM on Ducatis, maybe, but Royal Enfield? Sweet. Well, yes, but actually, no. This is a classic manufacturer's trick. Looky, looky, I bought an aftermarket Pirelli. It cost me my left nut, the tread depth is 5 millimeters, and it bears the plant code for Breuberg, Germany. OEM Pirelli Phantom Sports Comps look identical. I cannot tell the difference until I measure the tread at a pitiful 3 millimeters and notice a plant code for Gravitai, Brazil. And we all said together, what the shit? What kind of charade is this? <clears throat> Hello, I'm a motorcycle maker and I want your premium tire brand on my bike and I'll buy 10,000 sets of rubber if you can get it done for 50 bucks a pop. So the tire maker says what the polygamist who went on The Bachelor said, yes, I will stamp my reputable name on a tire for that price, but I'll have to make it in my cheapest factory with the cheapest rubber and not much of it either. So the motorcycle maker says, perfect. Thin rubber rolls with less resistance, all the better for acing fuel efficiency stats. And shallow tread depth is quieter, so our bike will appear more refined on test rides. Of course, this doppelganger will have none of the long-term performance that its reputable name once earned, but who cares about mileage? As long as it makes it one mile from the dealership, the sale is made. Yikes. Perhaps we should have been skeptical about tires especially designed to complement a new bike. Maybe we could have spotted the minute discrepancy in product codes. But really, what you gonna do? Just accept that your fancy OEM tires might be big fat zeros. Burn through the trickery and look forward to your first quality aftermarket set. Ready? <laughs> Mass is a simple and substantial question. Unfortunately, manufacturers can take even a fundamental physical property and make it tricky. And if you ask Triumph, weight is dry, no fuel, oil, coolant, even things like brake fluid, fork oil, battery acid can be drained. All right, I'm 12 pounds lighter without any blood in my veins. This is a useless and misleading metric, but one we're all familiar with. Harley-Davidson lists weight in running order. Of course, a bike will run with a teaspoon of fuel in the line, so that means precisely dick. Japanese brands typically list curb or wet weight, full reservoirs of all the required fluids, though they're not above leaving detachable things like toolkits off the scale. <sighs> Cross shopping should be much easier. If only there was a law-loving, anal-retentive organization to make rules for everything. EU regulation number 168 of year 2013 on market surveillance of two and three wheel vehicles and quadricycles mandates given weight include all standard equipment, all fluids, and 90% fuel capacity. Mmm, sexy. There are certain particular brands that actually hold themselves to this standard. Unfortunately, everyone else is still letting their fluids make a hard Brexit. So what's a few pounds cheated here and there? Well, when Kawasaki first introduced the KLR, they advertised a 337 pound weight. My KLR on my scale, 417. 80 pounds inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Obviously, all 37 pounds of gas was gone, four and a half pounds of oil, three pounds coolant, maybe another couple of miscellaneous fluids. You'd have to explain away the entire six pound battery and both tires. Oh, I count perishables, eh? It's not like they're system critical. The remainder is probably down to theoretical weight. Manufacturers have been known to take the smallest possible mass for every part. And say this cylinder head bolt is machined to a few micrometers tolerance, then it weighs 63 grams, plus or minus a few fractions of a gram. It's not technically lying to have your Excel sheet add up the lower possible mass for every part in the schematic, because 
In theory, 10,000 stars might align so a bike actually gets made with 10,000 slightly small parts, except it won't. And it is lying. Such egregiously erudite trickery can be outsmarted by any idiot with the meat power to lift their hunk of metal onto a scale. A bathroom bully under one tire, then the other will add up damn near accurate. If slightly underestimated, since weight always shifts downhill onto the unweighed wheel. A board can level the bike while measuring, yielding spot-on figures. Trust Newton. The mass has nowhere else to go. You could put an identical scale under each wheel, now you'll read the same results. If manufacturers misrepresent any fundamental concepts more than mass, some ads are all about horsepower. Other brands say, screw horsepower, feel the torque. It's bullshit. A motorcyclist can't really feel the difference. You don't believe me, but just look at what's happening in our engine. First principles. We have a piston putting a force on a crank of some size. Torque is just force times that moment arm, and power is just a force acting over a distance in a certain time. The distance being this circumference, which takes the inverse of RPM in minutes to go round. In other words, power is torque over R, times 2 pi R over the inverse of RPM. For it's simple, torque, 2 pi RPM. And because the imperial system is a pain in the ass, we need to know that once upon a time, somebody's pony could move 550 pounds of coal one foot in one second, or 33,000 pounds a foot in a minute. Kill me. Ridiculous, baseless, undervisable units, but I digress. Pound feet per minute. Torque in pound feet revolutions per minute. So we can take power divided by 33,000 for however many horsepower. 2 pi over 33,000 is 1 over 5252, so horsepower is torque times RPM over 5252. In other words, work is only being done by torquing force when it's moving. But you know this. Because I can put 120 foot-pounds of torque onto this rear wheel. Does that mean my biceps are twice as powerful and exciting as this F800? Yeah. No. A motorcyclist cannot feel torque until it's moving. And when torque is moving, that is horsepower. One is a function of the other. If you're feeling 40 horsepower at 3,000 RPM, you're feeling 70 foot-pounds. If you're feeling 70 foot-pounds at 9,000 RPM, you're feeling 120 horsepower. To experience one is to experience the other. Horsepower can't do anything torque hasn't already done, and vice versa. So resist the cruiser versus sport bike, torque versus horsepower marketing bullshit. Both are playing the exact same game, and both are tied to this RPM range. And that's what we control with our clutch and gearbox, and that's what we really want to know. Unfortunately, too many manufacturers quote peak figures with no rev speed attached. At best, they'll give one RPM snapshot. It's classic misdirection, showing your best foot to hide the whole ugly leg. And say I make 100 foot-pounds, it sounds great, but if it all comes at 2,000 RPM, that's like 38 horsepower, it'll rip my arms off idle, but it won't hold me there. And if I make 100 foot-pounds at 10,000 RPM, it's not necessarily better. I mean, sure, 190 horsepower, but it might take a lot of whining and winding on the throttle before I suddenly get to use it. What most riders desire is this. Steady torque across a long RPM range, resulting in evenly increasing up to a very high horsepower. And that's what feels best to most people. The manufacturers rarely publish full RPM pictures because they're almost never a perfect picture. It's easier to just throw the peak figures in front of our eyes to obscure what the bike really feels like. Our inevitable conclusion is that salesmen are salesmen, so just go ride. Feel the tires, feel the weight, feel the power and torque. Your own experiences won't deceive you. Thanks for watching. Practice once with me catching it, and then we'll go. Really feel the difference. Oh, sorry. A little slow, <laughs> feel the difference. 
That's good, a little less lob, a little more like whoosh, direct. Well, you can overhand it if you want. Well, that worked.